Anyone that owns a computer these days is familiar with the term RAM. Even with someone with a basic understanding of computers knows how important RAM can be for their system's performance. This is further illustrated by the jokes about how you can make your computer go faster just by downloading RAM. But jokes aside, RAM does serve a critical role in your device. Hello everyone, it's Mike from Sabron here. And if you enjoy tech videos and tech related videos, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you stay updated. If you have gone out recently to buy RAM for your PC or your laptop, you may have noticed terms like DDR4, DDR3 and now DDR5. This video will briefly look at what these terms mean and how does DDR4 perform against the next generation of RAM, DDR5. Before going into the differences between DDR4 and DDR5, we need to understand what DDR actually means and how RAM has evolved over the years. DDR stands for double data rate. If you want to know what the full nomenclature is, this is double data rate synchronous dynamic random access memory or DDR SD RAM. Currently, the most popular type of RAM is DDR4 RAM. You'll find these RAM sticks in most modern computers and laptops that you go out to buy. DDR4 arrived back in 2014 and since then has been the fastest generation of RAM. Having said that, there are plenty of old systems that still run DDR3 RAM. So DDR3 isn't totally obsolete despite the many years since DDR4 came. This all changed in 2019 when DDR5 RAM was announced. This is the latest and fastest generation of RAM that will become available soon. But it's important to note that RAM is not backwards compatible. So you need to make sure that your motherboard supports the generation of RAM that you actually want to use for the generation of RAM sticks. For example, you can't use DDR4 RAM in a motherboard that was made for DDR3, but you don't have to worry about accidentally plugging in the wrong RAM stick. All the generations of RAM are shaped differently. So it's almost impossible to insert the wrong memory into your computer. So before we talk about availability of DDR4 and DDR5 and all that stuff, let's look at what DDR5 has to bring and how it compares to DDR4. One of the most notable changes that comes to DDR5 RAM is the increase in clock speeds. DDR4 supported speeds between 1.6 to 3.2 gigabits per second. DDR5 on the other hand supports somewhere between 4.8 and 6.4 gigabit uh, data rates. That is a significant can jump. A higher bandwidth also translates to better performance as long as programs can take advantage of this. A second significant change is a reduction in operating voltage with DDR5. DDR4 operated with 1.2 volts, whereas DDR5 only needs 1.1 volts to run. This directly translates to lower power usage. Now, this may not sound like on its own a reduction of 0.1 being a very big change, but actually this is an 8.4% power reduction. This might not mean much for computer usage, but for things like smartphones and laptops, then DDR5 could make a much bigger significant change. There is another change in terms of how power is managed in DDR5. DDR4 was dependent on the motherboard for all its power management needs. This has changed with DDR5, which uses DIMMs or dual inline memory modules on the RAM itself to manage the RAM's power needs. By using DIMMs for power management, DDR5 memory will be more power efficient and will scale more easily than DDR4. This might also mean that motherboards could potentially be cheaper in the future, but the cost of RAM will potentially increase at least initially anyway. Another major change with DDR5 is the new DIMM channel architecture. We've already discussed that DDR5 will be using DIMMs to manage its power consumption, but the DIMM architecture itself is changing as we move from DDR4 to DDR5. DDR4 used a 72-bit data channel, 64 bits for data bits and 8 for ECC. DDR5 on the other hand uses 40 data bit channels with 32 data bits and 8 ECC bits. But instead of using one channel per DIMM, DDR5 uses two channels per DIMM, so the doubling of numbers. You don't need to understand all the technicalities, but the critical thing to note is that this means that DDR5 RAM will have much higher memory efficiency and lower latency, making your computer run faster with the right CPU pairing, of course. DDR5 also promises better error checking over DDR4. 
Memory error checking is an important feature for systems like servers that need to be online at all times. DDR5 is moving this feature on die, as we mentioned. On die means that this will be on the RAM chip itself, by the way, if you didn't know. Previously, RAM was dependent on the CPU's memory controller. By moving this feature on the RAM itself, we'll see gains in the processing power. The last substantial change to note is that DDR5 supports higher capacity RAM. With DDR5 buffer chip DIMMs, 64 uh, gigabyte DRAMs can be manufactured. If you've ever been shopping around for RAM with DDR4, you may have noticed that you could only buy up to 32 gigabytes per stick. This will change with DDR5 as the technology will allow RAM sticks of up to 64 gigabyte capacities. So for someone looking at building a PC with 128 gigabytes of RAM, you could potentially only use two 64 gigabyte sticks. Previously, you would have had to have used four 32 gigabyte sticks or eight 16 gigabyte sticks. This is made possible with DDR5 because it supports things like on die ECC, error transparency mode, post package repair, and read and write CRC modes. So we can finally have one stick of RAM that has 64 gigabytes of capacity. So for an average user, what kind of advantages will we be expecting by using DDR5? Well, there are definitely some benefits to using DDR5. The first one will obviously be the increase in bandwidth support. In time, DDR5 will bring clock speeds as high as 8,400 megahertz. This is a considerable jump from DDR4 that is usually offered in 3,200 or 3,600 megahertz sticks. As we've seen with Ryzen CPUs, the higher clock speeds can significantly improve performance in things like gaming, for example. This could also be great for ITX and small form factor builds. Normally, you are limited on ITX boards due to only having dual RAM slots, meaning less RAM capacity. But now you can build a system with double the amount of RAM compared to DDR4 ITX builds. DDR5 will also be more energy efficient. This will be really important for mobile devices, meaning that you'll get less battery usage and obviously longer battery life. Also, moving the power management on die means that in the future, we could see motherboards being a little bit cheaper or adding more features for the same money. And since RAM DIMMs manage power usage, it allows the RAM to be more power efficient. This would also come at no surprise that DDR5 memory will also be faster, more power efficient, offers more bandwidth and has more potential to grow. But does this mean that DDR4 will be obsolete? Well, not quite yet. DDR4 does everything an average user would need pretty well. And if you combine the fact that we don't actually have any components that actually support DDR5 right now, we'll have to wait a little bit longer to enjoy the benefits of DDR5. Intel's up and coming 12th generation Alder Lake CPUs will be supporting DDR5 RAM. MSI and ASUS are already testing motherboards with DDR5 support. So we might see these beginning of uh, next year. AMD will also support DDR5 potentially with its Zen 4 platform, but just be aware that DDR5 RAM will cost more just like any other new technologies, but we should see this come down in price as time goes on, as every older technology does. So will it be worth your money once it hits the mainstream? Well, it does kind of depend on your usage. If you are making a PC for gaming right now, for example, you are better off spending that money on components that make more of a difference, like CPU and GPU. Higher RAM does affect gaming performance to a certain point, but RAM usually is down the list of priorities because other components can have a much bigger impact on your gaming experience. However, if you are building a new system, it is always best to future-proof as best as possible and by choosing a DDR5 RAM compatible motherboard and CPU combo, you would be better off going for that than a DDR4 system if you don't plan to upgrade for a while. But DDR5 hasn't arrived to us consumers just yet and it 
probably won't be around until end of 2021 into 2022, when we'll see more components that actually support it and are widely available to purchase. So expect DDR5 to make a big splash, but don't expect DDR4 to go away anytime soon, especially with the state of the market as it is. But that's it for today. If you enjoy today's video, then make sure to hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified of more content like this one. Anyway, look after yourselves and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.